Hi, my name is Mike Bloom. I'm the Academic Technologist for the Humanities at the College of William & Mary. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about photography as storytelling. Using photography as a method of storytelling is really going to help students when they do study abroad projects, when they need to write research papers, and they'd like to incorporate photography or some other multimedia in their course, in, in their uh, research work. Um, I have here a picture that I took um, to sort of illustrate the concept of storytelling and photography as storytelling. Let me enlarge this for you so you can take a look at it. Okay, so if I had to ask you what this was about, um, you know, you might say this was, you know, I don't know, a picture somewhere in Egypt, it's a sphinx, um, it was a nice day perhaps, you can see that there's blue sky and some uh, clouds, um, but you can't really say very much about this image. It doesn't tell much of a story. Um, the concept is that when you're taking photos, specifically for research projects, um, it's a good idea to understand what your research project is about, what your topic is, um, and then you'll know what sorts of photographs you'd like to be able to take um, to be able to incorporate those photos into your research project and into your paper. So let me just go um, on to the next image and give you some idea of what I'm talking about. So here's the next image. And all I've done is I've shown a larger crop of the same exact photograph. But now this image is perhaps telling a different story. Not necessarily the story that you want to tell, but it's telling a specific story. So if your article, if your research was about, for example, um, the juxtaposition of modern culture and ancient culture, or if your research project was about different modes of religion in the same place, you might imagine that this would be an interesting picture for that. And we give it a little bit more context um, with a little bit wider scope of the photo, uh, we can tell it's probably somewhere in Europe. Um, we can tell that the Sphinx is now kind of out of place, which makes it a more dynamic, more interesting picture. And you sort of start letting the, the photo tell the story for you. Um, let's zoom out just a little bit more even. Okay, so now this is the picture as I took it before I started cropping it. And this is telling even more of a story. We can see on the far right, we see a sign. It's probably in Russian. And if you knew Russian, you would know that this says Russia, land of possibilities, um, which is a really interesting juxtaposition when you see all the other things you have working in the picture. So we have from the far left, um, the Sphinx, which is an ancient um, symbol. We have this church, which is St. Isaac's Cathedral. Um, dead center, which illustrates a different era. And then we have this these cranes up that are on the far right. So as we progress from the left to the right, um, we can see the trajectory of the story in interesting ways. And you can imagine a story that you might be telling in a research paper that would be about um, the modernization of Russia or, you know, how uh, Russia has advanced over the years. And this would be a really interesting image to tell that story. The other two images that we cropped and that I showed you earlier wouldn't necessarily tell that story. That might not be the story that you want to tell, but what I want to focus on is the story that you're telling should be represented in the photos that you're taking if you really want a good photo essay that will illustrate your project and your research paper. Um, you need to take a look when you're taking photos uh, as Photos are very much in the same vein as your actual research papers. You can write a rough draft of a paper, but you really wouldn't want to turn in that rough draft as your final paper. Same thing goes with photos. You can take your photos, but you want to make sure that you compose them correctly, you go back and you edit those photos, make sure that the things that you want to appear in your photos are in the photos, and make sure that the things that are superfluous to the photo are taken out of the photo. So for example, I have this image. It's a pretty powerful image, but 
Just like when you go over your essay again and you remove, mis you, you remove extraneous words or extraneous ideas, things that don't quite fit, you can do the same thing with a photo. So let me show you the very last image after I've cropped it. I've told my story and I think that my story um, is actually told really well in my photo. However, I have too much, in this case, I've got too much border, too much is going on in the borders. I want to focus exactly on what I want to focus on. So I'll have to show you the next shot. So as I zoom in, this is the exact same photo, but I've cut out the superfluous things from my story. So I didn't need to see, for example, the tail end of the Sphinx. I didn't necessarily need to see as much of the sky or as much as the foreground of, of the foreground if the story that I'm telling you is about the modernization of Russia and that Russia is this land of possibilities. Um, so this is just one example of how you can let your photos help you tell the story of your research. Um, and we can talk about other ways to do that in other segments.